This conference will now be recorded. Yeah, I hope you can hear me and see my screen as well. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's start. Uh, yeah. So uh, in the demo session, we had we will start with obviously with car pause DTA, uh, which is the main module of car. And in car pause DTA, we are starting with the sales transaction logs. So as I already explained in the last session briefly that sales transactions will comprise of 90 percent of the total volume of transactions that arise out of the pos system and uh, sales transaction can be audited can be processed in a number of ways so we are going to discuss that today but even before that let us understand the building blocks of a transaction log and uh, then we will start with the profile type definition and assignment and then we will proceed accordingly. So let me log into the system. Let's see if the last data is there or not. Yes, some data is there. Fine. So we already did one cycle of this creation of a manual transaction log and then uh, processing it with aggregated sales side of. We'll obviously go through those this uh, again. Now, why I opened this is just to give you a recapitulation of what I said in the demo session. So mandatorily a sales transaction log will have uh, three parts one is header which re which is represented by this entity transaction type which differentiates between the different kinds of transaction logs then we have item data which differentiates between the sales and return and then we have means of payment data there can be additional segments we'll go through those later but these three are absolutely mandatory header item and means of payment and if there are other uh, segments other sections of the tra transaction log we have to also define them in the config so we will start with the step one like definition of a profile and then defining these transaction types sales identity type, means of payment types against that profile basically anything any config object that you have to uh, define in uh, spro uh, has to be part profile. So profile is step one. So let's go to the discussion of uh, profile in the config section, and then we will again resume this discussion of transaction log processing it via aggregated sales or receipt based sales, and see it over again. So now let's go to configuration. So uh, under pos dt um, data management pos inbound processing under general settings we have defined profiles now in this client we haven't created any profile i haven't created any profile this is car 5.0 so this is pretty much new so let me create a profile now so this will be the default profile which will be there profile type triple zero one we'll just have to copy this to our own profile which we are planning to use going forward and save it and then let us understand what are the entities in the profile currency this is uh, one of the most important factor for defining the profile so uh, ideally this should be the base profile of the particular country where the store is or uh, where the retailer is uh, 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 located so say for example the retail uh, operation is restricted to us or north america or canada so there will be a one profile per country if it is having presence in, in multiple uh, countries multiple geographies then that many number of profiles needs to be set up say one for uh, china one for uh, uh, 
UK, one for any other European country, Southeast Asia, uh, Middle East. So currency plays a very important role. And with that, there is something called uh, exchange rate type. So nowadays, the usage of exchange rate type has become lesser and lesser because nowadays we have more and more advanced POS systems. So five to 10 years back, when the POS systems were not that sophisticated, this exchange rate type used to play a very vital role for certain cases. Say, for example, uh, stores situated in international airport or uh, nowadays, uh, even any uh, many of the US stores in specific areas will be accepting major currencies in the world, uh, Australian dollar, dollars, Canadian dollars, uh, uh, British pound, Euro in US, many of the US outlets they will be accepting. Now there is no problem in accepting and tendering that currency, but eventually that currency has to get translated to the base currency of the country. So that was done by this exchange rate type. So this was basically a, uh, a finance activity. So, Forgot that transaction type. Maybe just a second. So they used to define exchange rate type, and uh, against that exchange rate type, they used to define the translation ratio between one currency to another currency. I forgot that shortcut. Let me find it out. So this is a finance activity basically. So this is the exchange rate type. I mean, this is just a dummy one. And against this one, the translation ratio will be used. Exchange rate type from Euro to whatever values you want. So this has to be defined here. So this is a typical finance activity. However, saying that nowadays, uh, very rarely you will see that this is set up properly. I mean, you will find the exchange rate type, yes, but uh, that will be non-functional. That will be just like a dummy entity which will be present. It won't be doing a lot. Now, why? Because nowadays the US system itself is capable of doing the translation. So all the translation capabilities are inbuilt within all the modern POS systems. So you will never, uh, it will not be uh, required to do any kind of settings in car side. So when the data comes in, in the T-log file, the raw file, it will be already in the in translated. So you probably will not have to do anything about it. Very real, it depends on the uh, point of sale system you are using. All the uh, US systems in the last three years have the, that kind of thing. Anything which is dating back to five to seven years or 10 years there, it will not have the capability. But uh, I mean, it's more convenient to do it in the POS system because eventually car is not supposed to do a lot of calculation. Translation is a repository. So it should ideally not do any kind of translation. There is a capability to do that. But uh, if it is, it, it can be done in the POS side, which it can be in the modern day, uh, it's better. Fine. Now the next important control is sales price condition. So this four side of control subscreen sales price condition. This this uh, setting is only for uh, receipt based sales. So what I said in the other day is just yeah. What I said in the other day is for a sales log. For a sales T log, we have two ways of processing it. One is through aggregated sales, which will mean WPU MS and WPU TAB. We'll discuss this uh, in detail. And then there is a process of processing with it with WPU BON. Now this is called uh, 
received base cells and these two together are called aggregated cells now i am not going into that topic right now so the point that i am going to emphasize is this config setting pn10 is applicable only when you are using wpu bon how let me find the idoc of wpu bon any old idoc and then probably i can explain it better Yeah, there are a couple of them only not a lot of data now let's take any segment see there will be a sub segment e1 wp b03 and in that against the field name condition there is something called pn10 which is appearing so this pn10 comes from here so this is something which is used to represent the sales price in the idoc wp ubo and idoc generated from the uh, sales transaction log so this pn10 is basically this pn10 and eventually there is a pn10 in the s4 side also but uh, that's a different thing which is applicable for both aggregated and non aggregated cells so sometimes it is confusing but from car point of view as far as this particular uh, setting is concerned it will feed this field in the idoc wpu bon idoc okay fine uh rajesh just uh, one question so uh, all this particular sales condition type is relevant only for the transaction Go processing on. which are not doing aggregation yes there are two ways one is aggregation one is non-aggregation it is uh, applicable for only non-aggregation on, only for non-aggregation okay and, yeah. and uh, if we have some other message type which also does not do aggregation then also this is valid it does not depend on aggregation basically it, it is only restricted to sales side of processing and sales side of processing can be done in two ways aggregation uh, and non-aggregation now okay, so it's relevant only for sales side of processing yeah only for sales yeah. side of processing and okay. only for non-aggregated sales side of processing okay Fine. Then there is something called uh, check profile. Now, what is check profile? Now, whenever we are creating a transaction log, whenever we are creating a transaction log, be it manually or via IDOC or via uh, uh, direct, uh, 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 what is that, RFC call, I believe from PIPO, we can directly feed the uh, T log structure, item and header, and create it. Uh, transaction log so whatever be the way of creating the transaction log any error which any error which uh, can happen due to wrong information in the base file say for example uh, anything so this might be a wrong sales item type or this might be a wrong article quote, whatever it might be. So these will be flagged as error by this check profile. And there is additional setting which needs to be done, which is probably not uh, activated as of now. So that is the reason you don't see error message here. So it's a brand new system, so it is not activated. I will show you where it has to be activated. So check profile will check all the parameters related to a transaction log in every aspect. And if there are any errors, it will flag it. Okay. So this check profile is a kind of a uh, hard-coded config object. It's kind of a hard-coded config object. It has predefined baddies. Uh, and if we go to the config section of check profile, so we'll see that it's pretty much hard-coded it is a standard check profile there is no f4 option 
so these entities represent some calc some check in the background in the program itself you cannot change those it is not advisable to change any of the, these entities so some uh, it, it checks uh, uh, en code of the article it checks uh, unit of measure it checks the article code itself so it checks the site data meaning the uh, the particular store master item level also it will check the data like sales item all those things it will check so this check profile you can create your z version of it but don't change anything we are going to use the same standard check profile as it is so this check profile is some uh, is uh, used in all my uh, areas and this check profile uh, has to be activated so that activation part is there in a separate config which we will See, see, see soon. Okay. Then there is something called short overbalancing profile. Now, what is short overbalancing profile? Short overbalancing profile is related to a particular audit check. Now, in here in Mont Zero we have a particular business transaction called totals record totals record is nothing but your end of day audit check and and this short over balancing profile is exclusively and only used for this total record functionality so what is this total record functionality what, what does it do so it is restricted to your uh, um, it is restricted to your cash sale reconciliation mainly cash sale it can be used for any other a tender type but primarily for cash sale reconciliation so what does it mean so uh, say in a store let's consider a very practical scenario in a store uh, at a particular point of sale system say uh, at the end of the day the closing of the business hours say the amount of cash which is counted is say 200 euro okay and then at the post system you can find out the sale that has happened by specific means of payment type so you also find out in the system in a report that how much sale has happened via tender type cash okay now if those values between the the values between the counted one and the system uh, generated one matches then there is no problem but if there is a mismatch say your counted value of the cash amount is 100 and uh, the system is showing 90 or vice versa your cash value is showing as 110 and the system is showing 105 okay so in either case there is a discrepancy there is a discrepancy so it can be in the higher side meaning it can be higher than the counted value or it can be lower than the counted value so in either way there is a discrepancy and that discrepancy needs to be reported it needs to be declared and posted to financial accounting so that entire process is handled through this business transaction total record and to set up this total record business function uh, end to end you need to do five to six configuration steps now one of the configuration step is defining this short over balancing profile in a specific config node and then the next step is assigning this short over balancing profile in this base profile okay so this is a quite a big topic total record it is the end of day audit and to uh, facilitate that audit process one of the config activities is assigning this short over balancing profile here obviously this is included in your course content we will see it in details what it does okay so this is the definition of your base profile maintain profile now once this profile is defined what you can do is you can go to the store settings and you can assign this profile to stores say for example this is one of the store and i can use it 
I, I can take any other source. Basically, let it be uh, R104. I can take any other store. Now, all the live stores will be present in the F4 option. This uh, has to be done by the basis when they are setting up the connectivity between S4 and car. So this uh, this uh, uh, transfer of master data needs to be there. I mean that they will ensure via SLP. So put a store and assign this profile. Now from this point of time onwards, all the uh, config activities related to processing of data for R105 has to be configured via profile OI001. So we'll see that gradually. Okay, now, just a second. Okay, now with that, let us go to the next config setting, which is general settings. Before that, any questions? I don't think so. It is pretty much uh, straightforward. So if there are any questions, just let me know. I will stop and explain. So this is general settings. Now in general settings, uh, the first entity that we see here is standard profile type. So what is standard profile type? So currently uh, the options are the standard profile which SAP will provide and the one that I have created. Now, one of these I can maintain as standard profile. Now, what is the significance of standard profile? Now, let us understand uh, what is the significance of standard profile. Now, uh, let's say, you have uh, your retail business, you have your retail business uh, confined to only one country, okay? Now, what you can do is, uh, you can have one profile for the entire country, which is very common because uh, you have only one uh, currency and with that you can very well suffice which is fine now okay now let's say there are uh, a thousand or two thousand stores in the in, in a particular country say us and what you have to do you have to define a profile just like i have defined y001 and then you have to go to new entries and add all the 2000 stores and assign the Y001 against all the 2000 stores, right? Tell me if you agree or not. Yeah, I mean, if the country is same, then currency will be same. So we'll be assigning the single profile yeah, exactly. to all 2000 stores. Exactly. So I have to do it one by one and do it. Fine. Now, SAP says that is a tedious activity. If you know that you have only one profile and that can be applicable to all stores, then do not define anything over here. In the general settings, just define your profile as a standard profile and that's it. If you define anything over here, that becomes by default applicable to all live stores in the system. So in that case, assigning a store against a profile in the store settings becomes redundant. It doesn't have any, uh, I mean, it doesn't have any uh, specific effect. It's the same thing. You are doing the same thing. So in that case, I need not make any entry and assign it to Y001. So that means I don't have to assign here the 2000 or 3000 stores and assign Y001 to each of them. So I can keep this yes, section sir. absolutely yes. blank. Clear? Yeah, so if we maintain the standard profile, we can we can skip the assigned profile to store steps. Yeah, but By that default, is conditional. It will, it will, it, yeah. yeah, that is conditional yeah, because yeah. if you are having operations in multiple countries, then of course yeah. you cannot define anything as standard profile. You have to keep this blank. 
Yeah, yeah. So then we have to define individual profiles, multiple profiles, and assign it to yeah. stores as then, I mean, yeah, as it becomes a yeah. yeah, it becomes a tedious activity. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Is it a client specific, Rajesh? Is it a client specific setting? So if you have multiple countries and multiple different clients, then then, no, then you can then you can have the standard profiles per country. Yes, you can, but tell me where have you seen but I mean clients? I mean I haven't actually seen such thing that uh, client specific um, rollout. I have not seen that uh, 300 client is for US, 400 client is for uh, uh, Canada. I, I I haven't seen that. I mean it, it's a uh, I mean. Uh, IT overhead for the client in terms of overall maintenance and cost. No one will go for that kind of deployment. I, at least I have not seen in, in, in my entire thing. Okay. okay. So basically, it's a one client approach. So uh, multiple yep. countries on the same client. Yep. Always. Okay. Now, uh, master data filter so anyone of you have earlier worked in bw uh, post gm earlier no, no anyone okay now uh, earlier the predecessor of this car post gta was bw post gm so the bw box was hosting uh, this post gm okay and the system that was in place was uh, like now what happens in, in in the car architecture there is slt the slt will ensure that uh, the data is in sync between s4 and car so earlier in the bw post dm era uh, this was done by the bw extractor jobs so there were extractor jobs running and uh, those will extract the data from the retail system ecc retail system and it it will uh, feed the different tables different info queues in bw and then post dm used to get the data from those info queues or rather those tables so earlier there were bw tables which were the sources of data for post dm so earlier there were tables in bw table slash uh, bi0 material earlier of course it will not exist now because the entire architecture has changed earlier there will be this table for material this table for plant and there are so other many other tables each of these tables were updated from BW. Now, the entire architecture has been done away with, and now we have a car system which is independent of BW, and car has its own HANA database which is accessible through uh, which is accessible through HANA Studio. And I hope you have uh, HANA Studio already installed in your system. So. Let us go again back to this thing. So earlier in BW PostGM, the same config you will see 100% will be set as triple zero one earlier because all the master data checks was happening based on the data content of the BW table. So that is the reason you will find the master data filter set as triple zero one earlier in BW PostGM. Even even if uh, in the current context, if any client is using BW positive, we will see that this parameter set to as 001, but not anymore. Uh, we don't use this field in car for GTA because uh, we don't have any BW dependency here. It's totally blank. All our data is going to be checked based on HANA database. So let me HANA Studio. Open HANA Studio. So HANA Studio is a master data repository for car. 
or rather uh, this is basically uh, the the database the hana database for car resides in um, uh, resides uh, uh, can be accessed through hana studio i mean it is not ac system table basically there are few ac system tables but by and large it is hosted here so say if i want to see any article if it is there on in car or not i don't have a table in ac system table in car to see that article so where do i see it what is the uh, where where should the system access or if if you have to uh, write a piece of code in car to access articles in from mara so uh, how will you source the data from so that data will be sourced from car hana database which can be accessed through hana studio and you have to have a schema which of course basis will set up and that will be accessed through this one catalog this is a schema sap underscore s4h so this should mandatorily exist this is uh, one of the fundamental setting that basis needs to uh, do when he is setting up the connection between s4 and car let's go to the tables and these are all the tables which has been replicated from s4 to car now the current hana studio i have opened it is for 1909 it's not for the uh, sorry it, it is for uh, car 4.0 not for 5.0 5.0 car server uh, is having some problem so i mean is looking into that it is not connected to to, to to this particular car system but it will have the same set of data almost let's go to the data preview and we can find any article say 433 this is the article which exists in s4hana 1909 yeah so this is the article i am trying to find i can put a filter and find it in a more convenient way i'll put a filter here so any article which is created in s4 will be also updated updating in the corresponding mara table in the schema in hana studio in hana database rather hana studio is just the front end to access hana db so likewise you can see tables mart c mchb mbk ekko ekpo bbak bbap all the common tables everything will be there in this sap underscore s4h schema all the if there are any standard tables missing in the schema then you can uh, request basis to add them in the schema and then they can do the addition add uh, they can uh, do the addition and then they can uh, activate so any standard table in s4 90 percent of them will be present already or 95 percent rather anything extra that you want you, you can uh, get it done through basis even the z tables also you can it's just a matter of uh, adding it to the schema and activate it that's it and then they will get replicated via regular intervals in few seconds it is real time in in, in reality it will be real time one or two seconds it, it will get replicated the slt replication job is a sweep job i think um, it's every 10 seconds or five seconds it is scheduled so an slt uh, is a separate server by the way it's not sitting on s4 or it is not sitting in car it's a separate box which only basis have the uh, access and authorization okay so the okay. So one, one quick, quick one rajesh so this is a different server which you said the slt where the slt job so we as uh, mm -hmm. car consultants don't have to actually do anything to make sure that the data is in sync between s4 and the car box you have to only you can only do the check uh, between Checks. s4 and card tables that's it you will Alex. never ever have a authorization to slt that's owned by basis unless and until you are in the basis team 
you will never ever are going to have an access in that that's and very for, much restricted and for any data discrepancy between the two systems it is basis who need to be uh, looking into yeah you have to make them aware if, because they of are course. not going to proactively check so if you are uh, checking for some specific data and you see that it is missing you have to inform basis and then they will run the uh, run a manual replication and make sure that both are in sync Okay, thank you. Yeah. So the point of showing you all of uh, showing all these things was let me again go back. I got locked out. Oh. In the general settings, we keep it blank because uh, the master data check, the source of data is in car and DB, and this master data filter doesn't have anything to do with that. I mean, it doesn't have any connection to uh, you know, this uh, HANA DB. So it, it happens by default. It happens by default. So we'll keep it blank. Now, this checkbox is mandatory check using check profile so few minutes back and the profile definition i was mentioning that uh, whenever the t logs are getting created if there is any error it will be caught by this uh, check profile and those will be flagged as error and i also said that we have to activate the usage of check profile so we have assigned it fine where to activate it so that activation happens in the general settings via this particular checkbox so now if i try to create a, if i try to create a, a p log with a wrong article it will trigger a error message few minutes back I tried, but it was not showing any error message. So now let me try once more and see how the system reacts. And no material one for four. Oh. Uh, this has not been replicated i guess this article is not there in the hana db as of now anyway so anything unknown it will flag as error 144 exists in s4 but for some reason it is not replicated so any unknown article it will flag like this unknown material number so this is happening because we have activated that check we have activated the check profile so earlier you will not you were you were not finding that particular error but now you are only because the check profile usage has been activated so it is trying to go into uh, trying to go and look into the hana database and look into relevant tables like mara and see if the article is existing there it is not finding it and that is the reason it is flagging it as an error so anything not only article if the store is not missing uh, if the store is missing if uh, the sales item type or the config objects is missing then also it will react in the same way it will flag those as an error and then the necessary action has to be done So all the clients will find this to be active. Now let us find. Now there is a sub screen called uh, short over balancing. Short over balancing, and then there we see 
activate short overbalancing and we also see couple of entities as calculation task and task for outbound processing so what does it do basically what does it as what, what is it doing so earlier uh, i mentioned that uh, let's go to this small zero once more so there are uh, seven different types of business transaction and i mentioned that totals record is something which is used for end of day reconciliation for tender type and uh, by tender type uh, i mean it is mostly applicable and used for tender type cash now i also mentioned that there are five or six config steps which needs to be done to enable that usage of totals record functionality in the system and one of them is in the general settings where we activate short over balancing now the other the other name of totals record is short over balancing so we will all uh, we hear both the terms totals record and short over balancing both are same basically so we have to activate the this short over balancing in the client and we have to also activate the usage of these two tasks 0060 and 0061 in the client now these two tasks are exclusively used for processing the t logs of total record so that is the reason it is enabled it is assigned here so we'll see this of course in detail during our total topic discussion okay then one very important uh, addition in uh, car as compared to bw pol tm is this functionality store extensions in separate table so earlier uh, what used to happen earlier say i am creating a t log let me create a t log Yeah, let's create a log now. Uh, say uh, you have a requirement to capture custom enhancement, custom enhanced segment, or custom data rather. Let's uh, simplify it. What is custom data like? Uh, you can see that this uh, the structure of the T log. So there are fields like store, posting date, post number, partner number, register time. In the header da data, there are predefined fields. So the table uh, and the table of header, the structure of header can accommodate certain fields. Similarly, the structure of item can accommodate certain fields, and so on. Each of the each of the segment structure is capable of handling certain predefined number of fields. Now, of course, you can append those structures, but uh, uh, keeping that aside for the time being, let us say the customer wants to send some information from the pos system in the pos file which is not there in any of the standard fields so what do you do so you can basically add a custom extension enhanced segment like this field group z001 or field name is say z tax jurisdiction and say they want to send the tax jurisdiction okay so you capture it in this manner okay now you can do it in this manner that there is no problem but where will this data get saved where will get this data get saved earlier in bw post tm if 
you wanted to store this data in table you had to append the standard table because this this data will get added in standard table tlog f so this is the table main table slash osdw slash tlog f. this is where it will um, it's not having a lot of anyway let's So it will get saved in this table. There are not a lot, lot of data. So uh, yeah, so this is the data that I created just now. Now this will not contain the standard table. Of course, will not contain this custom enhanced data. So in the uh, earlier, what used to be done if uh, someone really wanted this data to be stored in the table level. Uh, they used to append the standard level table t log f earlier so that was the only solution available or make some development so that this data gets saved in some other dz tables so now sap has provided a solution to this a standard solution to this so what is that So activate this particular checkbox and if you activate this checkbox and then you create a transaction with custom data. Let's say Let's set it here. So what about the matter? So once you save this then automatically the custom data will be stored in a separate table by itself so there is a table which has been introduced by sap only for the purpose of storing those extended data ext see this is what i saved just now So you don't have to uh, make any uh, changes to the standard table structure for the purpose of storing the uh, custom data in the transaction log structure. So this table will be saving those data by default the moment the T log is saved. So this table can be leveraged by activating that checkbox. So this is a quite a uh, big uh, benefit in car because we have a standard table for storing only the extended data meaning the uh, custom data so we will always activate this table so this is about general settings then uh, tomorrow we will see the standard values and proceed further on the other config settings and in parallel we will start the uh, the sales log once more and this time to explain in more details and also to elaborate the difference between aggregated and non-aggregated sales. okay so tomorrow we'll start on time today i was a bit late because i was not able to connect uh rajesh just one question like uh, yeah, yeah. when the uh, when the transaction data reaches sap card uh, mm -hmm. by default some uh, it is processed based on the task configurations or we can uh, no. just block the default processing by configuration as well and do some manual uh, processing yeah so actually in daily we will never do manual processing what we will do is the transaction log will be uh, created and it will be hold it will not be processed immediately it will be yeah, processed so... only it will be processed only at the end of the day so the okay, task so processing 
will yeah. be uh, scheduled as a background job which will only start at 11 am 11 pm or 10 30 pm something like that the, uh, the job the program for task processing that will be scheduled in that manner yeah and once only process then those are visible in tlog f right no the moment the tlogs are created it will be visible in tlog f okay and uh, then uh, how do we know that which entries are processed and which are unprocessed uh, yeah yeah there is a table for that yeah there is there is an indicator in tlog f probably but there is a, another table for that yeah i think there is a report which can give you that data i don't remember it but i will tell you tomorrow okay so, okay. so Rajit, yeah. very quickly on the same lines, if you want to have uh, not have the processing at the end of the day, let's say after the store closes at 10 p.m., but on a, on a regular basis throughout the day, you want to just keep on adding the transactions on top of the previous aggregation. So you have like you can break down the day in four parts, 9 a.m., 12, 3 and 6 p.m., and then finally walk over at 10 p.m. Is that also possible? Yeah, it is. Uh, yeah, so it will process the TLOGs in group one, group two, group three, group yes. four, all independent of each other. Okay, okay. And at the end of the day, it will have the consolidated sales value no. for that. No. It will, uh, the, the, you are processing means you are finally, uh, 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 finally doing the uh, required thing which needs to be done. That is the meaning of processing. So it is not something after processing, there will be again a consolidated. So processing means consolidating. So at the moment, you are consolidation. Yeah. Okay. So it is consolidating. So it will have consolidation in then four different uh, times and four different groups. So that's how it will do. There is no specific. Uh, there is no final consolidation at the end of the day. Okay. Every time it does consolidation as well. All right. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, fine. So see you tomorrow. Bye for now. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Rajesh. Bye. Bye now. Thanks.